hydroxychloroquine. That's the medication you guys have been hearing about for weeks. We have all been wondering, is this going to be a game changer when it comes to COVID-19 treatment? I've been talking about it on the news as a, a lot of my healthcare uh, colleagues have been as well. I've always said on the news that yes, I am hopeful for this medication, just like I think everyone else is, but cautiously hopeful uh, in the sense that I've always felt and still do that we need studies to show if this drug works, uh, if it's safe, if, if it's effective, um, and all the things that we need to know. So that's always been my stance about it. Well, now we have some new data. You guys have also probably heard about this too. And keep in mind, today is April 22nd. I'm saying that because this information is likely going to change uh, in the days and coming weeks. We know there are ongoing trials for hydroxychloroquine, so we still have more to learn. I'm going to go through the data results and, and tell you what we have learned about this so far. Uh, a little hint, it's not the best news, okay? Uh, now let's go, a little, let's go back a little bit. I did a video on hydroxychloroquine chloroquine and what it is and how we've used it. It's a medication we've had for a long time. Uh, it's been used for the prevention and treatment of malaria. We also use it to treat things like lupus and other rheumatological conditions. Uh, so there are many people that have been on these medications for a long time. Now, yes, the medication is relatively safe. We've all been saying that, but there are potential side effects. It can cause heart problems in some people. It can do other things. So we have to respect the side effect profile and, and, and understand that it is not necessarily without problems. That being said, it's come on the landscape as a medication that could be a game changer for coronavirus. And yes, we are all looking for a medication treatment. I want one just as badly as everyone else, but I want one that's going to be safe and effective. So let me go through the data, okay? By the way, guys, I'm Dr. Jen Cardell. I'm doing daily videos on coronavirus. Okay, so this trial, uh, first couple things you have to understand is this was not a peer-reviewed trial. The peer review process is very important to have uh, when we talk about the validity of studies and trials and things like that. So this was not a peer-reviewed trial, and this was a retrospective analysis. It was not a randomized control trial. Now, if you want a little homework and you want to get all techie, just Google randomized control trial, and you can read up about why that trial is so important when we talk about um, getting data that we can use uh, to make medical decisions about, okay? This was a retrospective analysis of patients hospitalized with COVID-19 uh, in the VA health system, the Veterans uh, Administration uh, Medical Centers throughout the United States. Uh, the study wanted to understand the association between hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin use and how well they did clinically, right? How well they did overall. Uh, there were 368 males in the study, that's men only, and the median uh, age was over the age of 65. Uh, so that's one thing you have to keep in mind right there. You're probably saying, well, what about the women? What about young people? Well, that's what I'm saying too. And yes, we do need to understand how these medications perform in women, in children, et cetera. So it's very important that this trial only included men and men with a median age over 65 years old, okay? Um, patients were categorized into three groups. Uh, either uh, those were treated with hydroxychloroquine, those who had hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin, and those that did not have any exposure to hydroxychloroquine at all. We don't have a vaccine for COVID-19 at this time. We do not have an FDA-approved treatment for COVID-19. We are trying to find one. That's one of the things this, this trial is hoping to help us understand, just like the other trials that are undergoing. The results, drum roll please, this is what's very important important is the results say hydroxychloroquine use with or without co-administration of azithromycin did not improve mortality or reduce the need for mechanical ventilation that is being on a ventilator in hospitalized patients. Guys, did you hear me? It did not improve mortality or reduce the need for mechanical ventilation in hospitalized patients. On the contrary, even hydroxychloroquine use alone was associated with an increased risk of mortality compared to standard care alone. Guys, this is really important. It's really important initial data that we're getting. Now, remember what I said. This was not peer reviewed. This is not a randomized control trial. It only had men, yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. This is not a perfect trial, but this information is going to be added to our fund of knowledge about hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin, and it's going to help us make decisions about this drug. We have to wait to see what the other trials show and what other information that we get. But what's really important is that this underscores the need for studies. This is why we need to study a drug. It's not about saying, well, if that's all you have and why wouldn't you give this medication to a patient? We have to have studies to even be able to say that. We wanna make sure medications don't further harm people in addition to making sure that they could treat them and they don't have side effects and things like that. So that's what this process really is about. And when I say process, I mean that. It's a process. The other thing I should tell you guys is that um, the NIH um, on their website says, 
the COVID-19 treatment guidelines panel recommends against the use of hydroxychloroquine plus azithromycin for the treatment of COVID-19, except in the context of a clinical trial. So we have to see, okay, we just have to wait and see. We need more data. We need to understand how this is all going to play out. But this is exactly why we need data and we need trials. We need and want a treatment for coronavirus. We also need a vaccine. Uh, so it's really good that we are doing these trials. Guys, I hope this was helpful. I'm Dr. Jen Cottle, and I will see you soon.